For the surety is Yah, Yahweh has rained down from Shemayim the fire, his blessings. Hallelujah. Upon the house of Yisrael. And for that I do give him Toda. For yet he still speaks, Yisrael, unto the house of Yisrael. How? How does he speak? Do we hear a literal voice? Does he speak to the Shemayim? Yisrael. One thing we must understand about the voice of Yahweh, it is his call. It's everything. It's his essence. It's who he is. So where is he about, Yisrael? He is yet in the midst of us, Yisrael. If you do recall, quite a few weeks ago, we were engaging in the Torah concerning the voice of Yah. And how he moves upon the waters, Yisrael. Even when the world was out for him, it was without void, it was void, yet his Ruah still moved. The essence of his power of his life, it still moved upon the waters. His voice, it can still yet be heard, Yisrael. And it is still heard today. Well, we don't hear it, Zalkan Yeramiah. Well, you must have the ears. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear what the Ruah speaks unto the assembly of Yisrael. And at last, I did talk, say that I would get right into the power or the strength as it ex- expounded in Psalms. But before I get there, I do want us to converse, or if, we could, if I could take us on a little trip or a journey in the Torah. And I do want to start, in the beginning of all things, in Bereshith, Genesis. So if you would turn there, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Hallelujah. And again, we are still talking about the koach, the power, the strength, the might of Yahweh, what that produces, the wealth of that, Yisrael, in our lives. And it's important because we center our imuna where we stand upon the Torah of Yahweh. It should not be based upon what the news media says. It should not be based upon what men of so-called theology try to predict unto us, but it should only come by the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh, the Ruach of understanding, the Ruach of revelation through his Torah, Israel. So I want to start here in Genesis. Why? Because Yahweh gives instruction unto Adam. See, you must understand that in the beginning, Yahweh, he made all things. He set Adam to be the caretaker. He named all the animals that Yahweh created. Yeah. Yahweh said that Adam, he should not be alone. Right. Did not he say that? Yeah. And he also gave him specific instructions in the garden what to do and what not to do. Yeah. So Adam, even in this fleshly state, he was perfect in every way. Because Yahweh said that everything that he's made, it was what? Tough. So was Adam tough? Even though he fell short, was he tough? Was he perfect? Yahweh created him, did he not? So this situation, the fall of Adam, as many may say, it had to be a preordained plan. Why? Because all in the plan of Yahweh. We must understand, Israel, Israel, nothing happens that Yahweh does not know. And though his foreknowledge far exceed our understanding, Israel. So Yahweh, he allows, he permits things to happen. Why? So that we now in this generation may know and that we may understand the fruitfulness in the Torah and the examples that he give us time after time in Scripture. So let me begin reading here. Bereshit, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. How are we going to know the voice of Yahweh, Yisrael? Is it going to be only through his many blessings? Did not Adam experience all the wealth and the beauty and the blessings of Almighty Yahweh? Did he know Yahweh only by that, his voice, his blessings? Or, did, or in the latter time, did he not understand that it also is a other, another essence of the voice of Yahweh? And I will get into that. Hallelujah. Just bear with me tonight, Yisrael. It says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, And Yahweh, he took Adam 
And he placed him, he put him into the Garden of Eden to what? To work, to labor, to dress it, to take care of it, Israel. To dress it and to keep it. And Yahweh, he commanded, he salva, he commanded Israel, Adam, saying, he spoke, saying unto him, he said unto him, not by just a spiritual saying, but he spoke. Adam heard Yahweh saying, of every tree, was not that clear, Israel, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. Mm -hmm. Do we understand that, Israel? Every tree, many trees in the garden bearing fruit, luscious yeah. things, pretty things. In the beginning, everything pure. But of the tree of the knowledge of Tov and Ra, mm -hmm. you shall not eat of it. Yeah, yeah. Here he gives Adam commandment. And not only with this commandment, he gives Adam also something else. For in the day, for in the young, the day, there was a time appointed, Israel. Is there not a time appointed for the house of Israel? Yeah. Every day is a time appointed unto us to do what? To do tough? Yeah. Unto all men, but especially those of the buyer, Israel. Yeah. For in the day, this appointed time that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Adam heard this. And in seeing all the life and all the beauty, yet not until the latter point, and I will get to that, did he understand what the death or what this separation of Almighty Yahweh is. Mm -hmm. Yahweh spoke it. He spoke life, and he also, what did he speak? He spoke death, condemnation. If you do not walk according to my Torah, my misvah, my commandments that I give unto you, Adam, yes. Yes. you will die. You will be separated. And we understand that it wasn't an immediate death, but yet it was immediate separation. But yet we know that Adam, he did die, did he not? The first man, did he not die? So it was a judgment that was somewhat pending, if I may use that term. Well, what is pending judgment? Well, the, nation, the judgment upon this wicked nation is pending. We know that the wicked, they have been judged already. Is that not right, Israel? Do we see the true essence of the judgments of Yahweh? It is here, yes, it is in the nation. But it has yet to come to its fulfillment, Israel. It's something that is pending. If I may use the example of a bank account, you may put cash funds into your bank, but sometimes it pins. It don't go into that electronic account immediately. Even if you need it, it says it's pending. You cannot use it. Why? Because it's, say it's pending, it's there. But physically, it's not tangible. You can't take of it yet. Yeah, yeah. So yet, the judgments of Yahweh that is waiting upon this nation, upon the world, upon the wicked, it shall come to a, a climatic scene. It shall come to the end, Yisrael. Yeah. This is Yahweh knows the, the, the end from the beginning. But he said, you should not eat of it, for in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Yeah. And Yahweh said, it is not appropriate that Adam should be alone. He said, I will make to him a help me, a help me, that he won't be alone. And out of the ground Yahweh formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Yahweh even placed into the knowledge of Adam what to call each animal. He gave them names. Accordingly. And he said, whatsoever, whatsoever Adam loved, desired, of course his desire was placed there by Almighty Yahweh, he named every living thing. And it was named, that was the name of the thing thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, all the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a help meet for him. So Yahweh, he allowed Adam to name everything. Wouldn't that not be a privilege to name something that does not yet have a name? You can give it that name and Yahweh approves of it. Hallelujah. Yahweh gives him that power, Yisrael. Verse 21. 
And Yahweh, he caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took from his rims, from his loins, and clo- a rib from his loins, and closed up the flesh underneath. And the rib which Yahweh had taken for Adam, he had made a woman. Woman came forth out of man, Yisrael, and brought her on to Adam. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and shall be called woman because she was brought out of the ish, out of me, out of man. So in this we see the power of Yahweh being instituted, that he even give Adam a help meet, Yisrael. Well, what are you saying, Yeramiah? In this, Adam seen how Yahweh produced life. Every word that he spoke, everything that he did was just life. There was no death. It was just life. Living things growing, movement about him, seeing the power of almighty Yahweh. But then Yahweh, even through all that, there was one thing that Yahweh had to introduce into Adam. What was that, Yeramia? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's his judgment. It's his judgment, Yisrael. Yeah. When we trespass the commandments of Abba Yahweh, we receive unto us due recompense. And that is his judgment. The world at this time, they do not know the power of Abba Yahweh. Even Israel, Yahweh do not understand truly the power of Abba Yahweh. But yet it shall be revealed how? In his creation and what he's done? Yes, the beauty is there, Israel. What we see around us, it is beautiful. It is perfect. But we shall also know Yahweh in his judgment. That is power of the power, that is part of the power of the call of his essence. The voice of Yahweh is his judgment. You trespass, you shall receive upon you his judgment. Let me move on. Verse 24 of chapter 2. Therefore shall man leave his father, his his mother, his Emma, and shall cleave unto his wife, and there should be one flesh. And they were both naked. Naked. They didn't have anything upon their loins. Neither was there anything to hide, Yisrael. There was nothing to hide. Everything was exposed and everything was pure. Adam and his wife. And what does it say? They were not ashamed. They were not ashamed, Yisrael. Everything was in the open. No secrets. No vile deeds. No sin being hid. How open are we, Yisrael? Yes. Are our lives open unto our, our, unto our hope? Are our hearts open unto our, Abba Yahweh? Yes. Or are we hiding something? Why would we hide anything from one another, Yisrael? Yes. Why would we try to hide from Almighty Yahweh? Yes. Did not Adam try to hide himself? Yes. Why? Yahweh came Many times into the garden, his ruah moved, his voice, his call moved throughout the midst of the garden, called upon Adam. And each time Adam was in the appointed place at the appointed time, he was right there. He was right there. Why? Because he was obeying the commandments of Yahweh. He had nothing to hear. When you find something, when you find that you have to hide things, Israel, whether it's from your ark, from your hope, or you try to hide from the Torah, from the judgments of Almighty Yahweh, then that's because you have trespassed. You're sinning. You have crossed the lines that Yahweh said not to cross. We have partook of the abominable things, Yisrael, that Yahweh has commanded us not to partake of. If you understand the power of Yahweh, how he has renewed us, he has revived us, he has cleansed us, he has washed us through the Dhamma Yahshua, and yet we find ourselves still trying to hide from Almighty Yahweh. It should not be amongst the house of Yisrael. It is high time that we search our lair and that we find everything that is not of Almighty Yahweh, everything that offends him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 3, verse 1. And now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field what Yahweh had made. And he said to the woman, the serpent speaking unto the woman. Yes. Yes, I will get to that because even in Torah, it talks about. And this is Yah, Ko, being one. Everything was of one mind, one language. There was not a diversity as it is now, Yisrael. There is not a diversity in Almighty Yahweh. 
There's no variableness. You can't speed him up. You cannot slow him down. He's not tough or acting evil and then in good. He doesn't flip flop. He is one. He is always the same. He speaks to Yahweh in one way. He speaks to Yisrael in one way, with one voice, with one tone. Not all these little things that we hear, Yisrael. If it doesn't line up with Torah, it's not of, it's not of Almighty Yahweh. So everything was of one mind and one voice, Yisrael. Is it like that today? Everybody have their own opinion? Even the animals at this time, they all had one voice, and they all understood each other, Yisrael. You hear the mooing of the cow, it sounds different from the bleeding of the sheep, Yisrael. Yeah. There are hundreds of thousands of birds, isn't that right, uh, Yosef? And each one has a distinct sound, does it not? Wouldn't it be strange that it all had the same sound, they all understood each other, Yisrael? Let me move on. I will get to that. I will prove it, Yisrael. For Yahweh Arba, he is Ekah. He is one. Hallelujah. And the serpent said unto the woman, Yes, as Yahweh said, you should not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, first of all, did Yahweh give commandment unto Eve? Or was it given unto Adam? He spoke to Adam. And Adam gave commandment unto his Isha, unto his help me. Yahweh spoke unto Adam, not unto the Ish, Isha. He spoke unto Adam. And here is Satan coming to take advantage of the moment he speaks unto her. Why? For what purpose? To deceive her. To deceive her. To turn her away from the commandments that her Ish had commanded her from the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. We find in this nation, in this religious facet, women calling themselves preachers over the man, saying that Yahweh is speaking unto them. No, he is not. He is speaking unto the Ish. And it's up to the Ish to give commandment unto the Isha. Does not Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach, speak unto the house? Didn't he do all that the Abba had commanded him? Did not he speak unto Yisrael? Even at that time when the voice of Yahweh was not heard, yet it was heard out of the mouth of Yahshua HaMashiach. So let us hear the voice of Yah Yahshua HaMashiach to not Yisrael through the Torah, the living word. He said, yes, has Yahweh said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of every, every fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Yahweh has said, you should not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman. So here it is, the woman, not hearing the voice of Abba Yahweh, yes. but had got commandment from her ish, her ish, is now taking heed unto the voice of this sly serpent. And this serpent is lying. He's lying unto you. He is twisting the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. For Yahweh... He does know that in the day that you eat thereof, that your eyes shall be open. Now, first of all, did not Yahweh create every living thing, every tree, every tree that produced fruit? Did he not? Was it not all tough? There are those that say that Yahweh did not create the tree of the knowledge of tough and evil, that it was put there by Satan. No, it was not. Yahweh created both tough, tough and both raw, Yisrael. But he had commanded Adam not to eat of that tree. Why? Because it was not an appointed time for him. There's an appointed time where Yahweh will reveal all things. But it is up to us to do what first? To obey what he has commanded yeah. us, Yisrael. And not to walk as Adam did, disobeying the commandment, the Torah of all by Yahweh. So in this her eyes were, he said, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as God's. Both knowing tub and rough, or what we say, good and evil. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was pleasant for food, and that it was desirable unto the eyes, and the tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. Yeah. Have we partaken of the forbidden fruit, Israel? Yeah. Don't you know that it's a judgment? that awaits one that disobeyed the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And the eyes of them both 
they were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. See, all of a sudden now they had to cover, they had to hide themselves. Why? Not only because their eyes was opened by the fruit, that, it, that really wasn't the true essence. It's because they transgressed the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. The transgression of the Torah is, is the most forbiddable fruit that we could ever eat, Yisrael. Why? Because it causes death. So how were their eyes open? Did not Yahweh tell Adam that in the day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die? That shows the power of Abba Yahweh. That shows his true essence and his nature for that which he speaks to Israel, it comes to pass. Yeah. See, many times we want to play Yahweh as a, as a child. We want to play him, oh, he, he's not going to hurt, but yet we keep transgressing his Torah. We keep um, going beyond the boundaries and the lines, lines Israel, that he intends for us. And it should not be. Don't we understand the judgment, the pending judgment Yahweh has, Israel? For transgression. Verse 10. And he said to her. Um, verse 9. And Yahweh called unto Adam. And said to him. Where are you? He's calling unto Adam. Where are you? He wasn't in the place where Yahweh had elected him. He wasn't out in the garden tending to it. As he should. Are we tending to our garden Israel? Are we watching the things that are planted. And what's growing in our lives. Don't you know if you're not careful. Weeds were overtake it. At this time, there were no weeds in the garden. Adam did not have to worry about the briars and, and, and things overtaking the garden, Yisrael. But yet, when you allow sin into your heart, when you transgress the Torah of Yahweh, everything you put your hands to, Yisrael, it is a labor. And thorns and thistles where, will be the fruit of what you, put, what you put your hands to, your labor, Yisrael. If we don't walk in the Torah, the, the, the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 10. And he said, I heard your voice. I heard your call. He heard the voice of Yahweh. He heard, he sensed the ruah of Yahweh moving in the midst of the garden. So he hid himself. And I was afraid. He felt the, the yirah, the array of Abba Yahweh. The fear, the judgment. He did not understand. He knew that Yahweh said that you would die. But he didn't understand the, the essence fully of that Yisrael. So he feared, he hid himself because of the judgment. He said, because I was naked, I was revealed. I was open in your presence. I know that you knew what I have done, that I have transgressed your Torah, Yahweh. He said that I was naked. Should not we be naked in front of Abba Yahweh? Should there be things in our left that we hide, Yisrael? In our tents, in our bayets, Yisrael. He said, I was naked and I hid myself. Verse 11. And he said, who told you? Who now God? Who told you? Who informed you, Adam, that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree? Thereof that I commanded you, I gave you misfire commandment not to partake, not to eat of. Adam said that the woman you have gave to me, with me, she gave of me of the tree, and I did eat. And Yahweh said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said that the serpent hath beguiled me, and I did eat. Have we not let the serpent, Yisrael, y'all? What is the serpent? Well, the serpent is the things that cross the lines of Yahweh. Your flesh could be the serpent. Your mind against the Mishvah, the commandments of Yahweh, could be the serpent, y'all, Israel. And Yahweh said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. He said, Upon your belly shall you go, and the dust shall you eat all the days of your life. See, until now, we hear all the judgments from Almighty Yahweh for transgressing his Torah, Israel. Before the time, before it's Adam, um, before he transgressed the Torah, there was not a pending judgment of iniquity of sin or damnation. But because he partook of that which Yahweh told him not to, yes. then he received the judgment. He received the call, the voice of Yahweh. Don't you know we should know Yahweh and his judgment, Israel? 
even all the beautiful things that Adam and Eve was able to partake of, yet it was important that he, they also partook of the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. Have we not partaken of the judgment of Almighty Yahweh? Did he not say in the Torah that if you sow to the wind, you shall reap the, world, the whirlwind? And whatever you sow of the flesh, you're going to reap that Yisrael. So why don't we sow to this body, sow to the Ruah of Yahweh, his Torah? As we hear it, we allow it to till our minds, to till our lives, that he can plant the seeds that shall produce the life and the fruits that he desired, Yisrael. For he knows our latter end. What is that latter end? It is the two, it's things that should uplift us. Tough things, Israel. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. And he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your Zerah and her Zerah, and it shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Mm -hmm. This is talking about the commandments of the judgments of Almighty Yahweh. And we will get to the thorns, Israel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and conception and bearing, bearing seed, bearing bane. And in sorrow, you shall bring forth children and your desire shall be to your ish, your husband, and he shall rule over you. And it says here in verse 17, the judgment unto Adam and to Adam, he said, because you have hearkened to the call to the voice of your wife. And have eaten of the tree of which I have commanded you. I have given you Torah, specific instructions not to eat of it, saying, you shall not eat of it. He says unto Adam, curse is the ground for your sake. Why? Why was it for his sake or for his well-being, Yisrael? Why? That he would be, commanded, be, be reminded of what he had done. Every time he would plow Every time he would plant seed to feed his nephesh, what came up? Thorns. Prickly things. It makes it harder to get to the fruit, Yisraeli. If you plant a garden and you don't tend to it, the little fruit that is produced, it would be hard to see and it would be hard to get to. So why did Yahweh allow that? That he would be reminded of what he had done. That he has transgressed the Torah. So every time he would till, every time he would plant, it yield forth briars. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Way. And he said unto Adam, because you have hearkened in verse 17 to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree which I have commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, curse is the ground for your sake, and in sorrow you shall eat of it, all the days of your life. You think about your life, Yisraeli. Do not, even the world, do not man just, the, all the labor is just for one thing, to try to sustain life in this physical body. It is hard. It is treacherous. Work. To put bread on the table. Even at this time, this, this um, uh, recession, that the Americas is still feeling, and this canker has spread it around the world, Yisrael. Yeah. They're feeling um, the pains and the agonies of providing bread or to put food on the table. Yeah. See, Yahweh, he commanded that even from the beginning. Has it changed, Yisrael? Has it changed? For Yahweh does not change. His word never changed. That is the power of his code, of his essence. He never changed, Yisrael. Even from the beginning until now, his judgment's the same. If you transgress the Torah of Yahweh, the judgment is still yet the same. It has not changed, Israel. Don't let, our, don't let ourselves be fooled. Do not let the serpent speak unto your mind as it spoke unto Eve. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, in sorrow, verse 17, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. If I would kind of interpose Israel, if you would turn with me to Mishli Proverbs chapter 24, verse 28, I want to begin reading concerning what transgressing or sinning against the Torah of Yahweh will produce unto us. And we should not be as Satan to our, our, our hope 
to lead one astray. Israel. Mishli, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 28. It says, be not a witness against your neighbor without a cause. Was not Satan a fault witness? Israel. And deceive not with your lips, with your lashon, yes. with your feth, with your mouth, Yisrael. We should not deceive one another. We should not lie one unto another. Verse 29. He says, say not, I will do so to him as he had done to me. I will render to the man according to his own work. Verse 30. I went by the field of the slothful. We cannot be slothful in this time, Yisrael. Because the judgments of Yahweh, they stand assured. So our nephesh, our minds, Yisrael, we must continually be reminded that if we allow Satan to come in, if we allow, if we transgress the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, if we be slowful, then the vines or the things that choke out the life or choke out the fruit of Yahweh in our lives yes, yes. shall be overtaken, Yisrael. So he went, he said, I went to the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man of Adam that was void of an understanding left. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns. Did not Yahweh say that what you put your hand to, Adam, to the ground, it shall produce unto you thorns and thistles? It was grown over with thorns and with nettles, had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. What does stone wall, um, what does it represent? Why would you put up a wall? A wall is a barrier. It's set for as a protection. What, um, what some people did in the old days, when they have a vineyard or a garden, they would put walls about it. Why? To protect it from the harsh winds, the harsh weather. And things of that nature, Yisrael. So right here, because this man did not take care of the ground, he did not watch his left, he was slowful, he did not go and pull out the weeds as he should have. It says that the thorns and the vines overtook the garden, and it even brought down the walls, the strong things thereof. Yes. And the stone wall there was broken down, verse 32. And I saw and considered it well, and I looked upon it, and I received instruction. Do we receive instruction tonight, Yisrael? Yes. What the Ruach is saying unto the assembly? Not to transgress the Torah of Abba Yahweh, to guard our lives, to be caretakers of the grounds or our minds or our lives, and not only that, to be caretakers of one another, Yisrael. Not to deceive one another, but to speak truth to our neighbor at all times. In verse 33, get a little sleep, Yet a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. See, Adam could not afford to let time waste, Yisrael. We can't afford to let time go by. It's time that we stop playing with Almighty Yahweh and take his judgments, his precepts seriously, Yisrael. Verse 34. So shall poverty come as one that travails, and your want as... An armed man. So let us walk, not contrary to the Torah of Yahweh, but let us walk according to all that he has commanded us, Yisrael. And it's not hard to walk according to the Torah of Yahweh. What makes it hard for us is iniquity. It's sin. That is the stumbling block for Yisrael. That is the stumbling block. Let us continue. Back to Bereshit Genesis chapter 3, verse 18. I want to continue reading. Unto, chapter, unto verse 19. Talk about the thorns and the thistles, Yisrael. The judgment of Almighty Yahweh. Genesis chapter 3, verse 18. Thorns and also the thistles that shall it bring forth unto you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. And in the sweat of your face shall you eat bread. Isn't that true, Yisrael? Yeah. That if you don't labor, if there's no sweating of the face, then you should not eat the bread, Yisrael. Yeah. He said, for dust you are, and to the dust shall you return. Yeah. The judgment of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. 
the judgment of Almighty Yahweh, the power of his Torah, it never changes. Hallelujah. And us even knowing that, Yisrael, even his promises unto us, it never changes. He never fails. Hallelujah. He never falls short, Yisrael, on his promises nor his judgments. Hallelujah. Jubilees chapter 3, verse 28 to verse 31, I want to read. And this is concerning, as I was talking um, about before Yisrael, everything was of one mind and one voice. That was Yahweh's plan from the beginning of all things, from the Bereshit. Yeah. Yeah. In Jubilees chapter 3, verse 28, it said, and on that day, this is still talking about when um, Adam fell short, when he sinned against Abba Yahweh. And on that day was closed the mouth of all beasts and of cattle and of birds and of whatsoever walked. The mouths were closed, Israel. And whatever moves. So they could not no longer speak. For they had all spoken one. Eka, one. With, they all spoken one with another. With one lip and with one tongue. With one lip and with one tongue. Doesn't that sound like Almighty Yahweh? Does he not desire us to speak unto our, to one another with oneness of mind, with one lip? Hallelujah. One theft, Yisrael. Yeah. That there not be a diversity amongst the house of Yisrael. Yeah. That we all understand the Torah and the moving of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. That was his plan from the beginning, Israel. They were all with, of one lip and with one tongue. And he sent out of the garden of Edom all flesh that was in the garden. And all flesh was scattered according to its kind, according to its type, unto the places which have been created for them. So there was places created for them. So in the foreknowledge of Yahweh, was not all this in his plan, Yisrael? Yeah. See, Satan, he thought he had the upper hand on Yahweh, but he don't know that Yahweh, if I may use this term, he plays the cards. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yahweh is the chess master. Yeah. He plays the pawns where he wants to place the pawns. Hallelujah. He puts the king. He knows what he's doing, Yisrael. Why? Because at the end of all things, Satan, he's already in checkmate. Hallelujah. He's already been overcome. Verse 30, and Adam alone did he give wherewithal to cover his shame, to cover his nakedness, Yisrael, of all the beasts of the cattle. And on this account, it is prescribed on the heavenly tablets. It is written. It is written. We should not walk around. With the shame of our nakedness being exposed, Yisrael, is that not what the world do all the time? Yeah. They expose themselves. Yahweh does not desire the wealth of Yisrael, the nakedness of Yisrael, to be exposed to this heathen generation, Yisrael. So that's why it's so important for us at this time to cover ourselves. Yeah. We should cover ourselves, Yisrael. Our minds should be covered with the Ruach HaKodesh. Did not we sing this song that we put off these old garments and put on these garments of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh? So it has been prescribed, it has been written upon the tables of the Shemayims as touching all those who know the judgment of the Torah. Mm -hmm. Have we not talked about the judgment of the Torah, the judgment of Almighty Yahweh? That they should cover their shame. You go around exposing yourselves, Yisrael, Yah, you're crossing the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. And should not uncover themselves as the going, as the Gentiles. Uncover as the Gentiles uncover themselves. They're not ashamed to show themselves. They flaunt themselves, Israel. We're not, we should not flaunt our, ourselves before this heathen generation. We should save the essence of the beauty that Yahweh has given unto us only for Yahshua HaMashiach. It is not for everyone to see. Israel, your bodies are not for everyone to see. You should cover yourselves. You should not expose yourselves. For your body, which is the body of Almighty Yahweh, is only for him. 
and for him alone, Israel. So cover yourself. Wear the things that are appropriate that Torah commands us to wear, Israel. Not what the world wears. The world, they, the women, the pants on the women, it is extinct amongst the world. It should not be extinct. It should not be in the house of Yah. Why? Because what does the pants do on the women? The pants they decide for women is to expose themselves, Israel. And Yahweh had commanded us not to dress ourselves as the heathen do, Israel. And that also, in essence, is guarding our minds, covering our lives, Israel, fully with the Torah, with the armament of Almighty Yahweh, that an enemy just cannot come in and have his way with us, Israel. Hallelujah. Why do we transgress? Why do we sin, Israel? Even to this understanding of the Torah of Yahweh, we still yet fall short. We still yet transgress. Why do we sin? Turn with me to 1 Baruch chapter 1, verse 17. Hallelujah. 1 Baruch chapter 1, verse 17. He exclaims here and confesses, for we have sinned. Before Yahweh. I know I have. I have fallen short. I have tr- crossed the, the misfire of Almighty Yahweh. And disobeyed him. And have hearkened not unto his code. Unto his ruach. His essence. His voice. Unto the voice of Yahweh our Almighty. To walk in the commandments. His mishvah. That he gave us openly. He did not hide his commandments, Israel. Yeah. Did he hide the commandments from Adam? No, he spoke openly unto him, did he not? Yeah. Since in the day that Yahweh brought our forefathers out of the land of Mizraim unto this present day. He's talking about this present day. The Torah of Yahweh is a now word. It is a living word. This present day. We have been disobedient unto Yahweh our Almighty. And we have neglected and not hearing his voice, Israel. We have neglected Almighty Yahweh, Israel. Don't you know Yahweh has beautiful things to speak unto us? To show unto us, to reveal unto us, Israel. So why do we want, why do we turn our ears? Why do we hide? Why are there secret things that we try to put under our tents, if I may say? We have partaken of the garments of the world, and we hide them. We have partaken of the riches of the world, the things that they uh, deem as precious, and we try to hide them, Israel. Yeah. But you know that that incurs the judgment of Yahweh upon the entire house. Was it not Achan? He hid, he said there were beautiful garments, and I hid them of the things that Yahweh commanded him not to. And what did that do? It brought judgment upon the whole house. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Therefore, the evils cleaved unto us and the curse, which Yahweh had appointed by Moshe, his servant, at the time that he brought our forefathers out of the land of Mizraim to give us the land that flows with milk and with honey, like as it is to see this day. Nevertheless, we have not hearkened unto the call, unto the voice of Yahweh, our Almighty, according unto all ko, all. Yeah. The same expression is in the voice, ko, all. It's the whole essence of Almighty Yahweh. According to all the words of the prophets, whom he has sent unto us. But every man, he followed the image of his own wicked heart. Did it not say every man? Every man has an image, their own way, their own concept, where it all should just be one concept in one way, Israel, as Yahweh desired it from the beginning, to serve strange gods, idols, and to do evil in the sight, in the sight of Yahweh, in his presence, Israel, in the sight of Yahweh, our Almighty. Done evil. Why? Because we don't want to hearken. Unto the voice of Yahweh, all by Yahweh. We don't want to hear Yisrael. And it's high time that we forsake all the wicked things, all the abominable things, Yisrael, and follow the Torah of Yahweh. It's not hard. It is written for the simple ones even to understand Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Acts. 
chapter 7, verse 27. Talking about the coal of Yahweh and all the beauty in his creation and all that Adam understood. Yet he seen even the judgment of, of almighty Yahweh. His, see, his call is everything, Israel. If you don't get anything from this message tonight, understand the voice of Yahweh is his call. His judgment is his voice. His blessings. It's the same voice, Israel, that speaks the power of his voice. That it even calms the raging seas, the raging waters. Did I not talk about the waters the last time I stood up here? How the waters raised, and yet Yahshua, he was able to tread to walk upon the waters. Hallelujah. Back to Acts, chapter 7, verse 27. But he did his neighbor wrong, thrust him away, saying, who made you a ruler and a judgment, a judge over us? Will you kill me as you did the Ethiopian yesterday? Then fled Moshe. This is talking about when Moshe, when he saw how um, there was a, a brother being scourged with the whip to the point he just could not take it anymore. And what did he do? He smote the Egyptian and killed him. It said, then Moshe, he fled at this saying and was a stranger in the land of Median, where he begot two sons. Verse 30. And, and, and when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, Sinai a Malak, a messenger of Almighty Yahweh, and a flame of fire in a bush. When Moshe saw it, he wondered at the sight, and he drew near to behold it. And it says what? That the coal, the voice of Yahweh came unto him. Do we understand the voice of Yahweh as he speaks to Israel? Yeah? Yeah. Even out of the burning of the bramble of the bush, he speaks unto Israel. Yeah? Verse 32, saying, I am Yahweh of your fathers, Yahweh of Abram, Yahweh of Yitzhak, and I be by Yahweh of Yaakov. Then Moshe, he trembled and dared to look and dared not to look upon the bush. So in the voice of Yahweh, it was so powerful unto Moshe, hearing this voice speak to him, that he trembled, that he feared, that the voice was so strong that everything in him, Yisrael, was shaken. But there was one thing that was not shaken in Moshe, and that was the Torah of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Doesn't the world try to shake us, Yisrael? They try to shake everything that, uh, that gives us life that gives us assurance, that gives us hope. The world tried to shake that out of you, Israel. They tried to choke it out. But yet the Torah of Yahweh, when it shake you, hallelujah, it allows the essence of that which Yahweh have placed in your left to come alive. Hallelujah. I told Yahweh. Turn me to Jeremiah. Chapter 3, verse 25. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 25. Hallelujah. It says in Jeremiah, we lie down in our shame, and our confusion, it covers us. For we have sinned against Yahweh, our Abba. We and our Abbas, from our youth even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of Yahweh. Almighty. But you shall say to them, This is a nation that obeys not the voice of Yahweh their Abba. Which nation is he talking about? Is he talking about the Goim? Is he talking about the heathen? Or is he talking about the heathen nature of Yisrael? Nor receives correction. 
Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Therefore, now amend your ways and your doings, Israel, and obey the voice, the call of Yahweh your Abba, and Yahweh will repent him of the evil that he has pronounced against you, or the judgment, the pending judgment, Israel. If we would turn unto Yahweh Abba, stop our wicked ways, and go in the path that he has commanded us, in his direct, in his Torah, in this straight and narrow way, Israel, that he would turn the judgment, the evil that he has pronounced upon us, Israel. But we must shoot, we must turn. Turn me to Jeremiah chapter 42, verse 19. Concerning the code, the voice of Yahweh, his essence. When he speaks, Yahweh, is conditions of Yahweh, it's the power, it's the strength, it is the beauty of all that he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak unto your house, Yisrael. That we may have the ears to hear your voice, Yahweh, amongst this wicked and perverse generation. You know, there are all kinds of things that try to drown out the Torah, Yisrael, out of your lair. There's radio. You can tune to the stations on the receivers. Hundreds, sometimes thousands of channels. But we cannot tune into the code, the voice of Abba Yahweh. The media presents unto us instance, account after account of everything that's going on around the world. But yet we cannot turn the pages of the Torah of Abba Yahweh and find out what's going on, Israel. Every account that we see is written in Torah. Hallelujah. This, this, the media is not telling nothing new. For all has been written in the Torah. Jeremiah chapter 42, verse 19. Yahweh has said concerning you, O you remnant of Yehuda, are we not the remnant of Yehuda? Go you not into Egypt, into Mizraim. No, now, know certainly that I have abolished you this day. For you deceive your own nephesh. When you sent me, for you deceive your own nephesh when you sent me to Yahweh your Abba, saying, Pray for us unto Yahweh our Abba, and according to all that Yahweh our Abba shall say. So declare to us, and we will do it. Verse 21. And now I have this day declared unto you, but you have not obeyed the voice, the call of Yahweh. Your Abba. Have we heard all that I have declared unto us, Israel, tonight? Not to continue in the path of sin. Not to walk in the lust of our hearts, the lust of our imaginations, Israel, that we go serve other gods. The voice of Yahweh Abba, nor anything for the which he has sent me unto you. Verse 22. Now, therefore, know certainly that you shall die by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence in the place whether you desire to go and to sojourn. So no matter where we try to run, where we try to hide, no matter where we go, Israel, we can't escape the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. You cannot hide from it. Adam and all that he tried to do in the garden, hide it behind the trees or whatever, putting on a cloak, trying to cover himself. He could not hide from the call of Abba Yahweh. He could not hide from the presence of Abba Yahweh. Why do we feel like we can hide? Israel. Yeah. Let you know when there are two or three gathered in the bayat, in the midst, that, that Yahweh is in the midst of us, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. His judgment is in the midst of us, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. I told Yahweh. I brought Yahweh for all things, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. For he is tough. And his mercy, it endures forever. Not only does his mercy endure, but also his judgments endures. Should we not we find comfort in his judgment, Israel? Because if you cannot find comfort in his judgments, you cannot find comfort in his exaltation, in his admonishment, in his promises, in his riches. 
Did he not say that in his right hand there are, um, there are riches? There are pleasures forevermore, Yisrael. Yeah. Don't you know that Adam, he experienced the right hand of Yahweh in the garden, the pleasures of all things? Yeah. Yet in that same hand, there is the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. So let us continue to walk in his Torah. Let us continue to search Yisrael, Yah, to search the Torah, search the scroll. For in them do we believe we have eternal life, Yisrael, Yah. Hallelujah. I pray that this message has been an inspiration to your love. I do have more, Yisrael, but I don't want to go into this right now concerning um, the power of, of Yahweh. But let me read this into Helium. Hallelujah. And Psalms, before I bring this to, to a close. The Song of Solomon. I'm sorry, no, not, not there. Hallelujah. Toda Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking for Psalms. Hallelujah. Totally Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh is tough. And his mercies, they do endure for all generations. For the call of Yahweh, his voice even breaks the cedars, Yisrael. What does the cedars, what do the cedars represent? The cedars represent strength. Represent the pillars. Well, not the bayat of Yahweh. That was one of the things that was needed in the building of the bayat. They saw the pillars of Lebanon, the strong things. They also represent kings. They represent the, um, the high things in life, the powers that be so. Hallelujah. Even in this government and this nation, Yahweh has placed pillars in this nation, whether it's presidents or governments. It's all ordained of Yah. But what is he going to do? He's going to tear it all down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to tear it all down, Yisrael. Nothing is going to overcome the power of the voice of Abba Yahweh. Because everything moves by his voice. The winds move. The waves move, Yisrael. Even we move. For we live, we move, and we have our being in the cold, the voice, the essence of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. To the Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kedusha to Yahweh, I'm just going to end right there. Hallelujah. And when we come back, um, I'm going to explain to us concerning the power of Yahweh and breaking even the cedars of Lebanon. The strong, the powerful things, the things that seem to try to bind us and keep us, Israel, Yahweh is going to break those things. He's going to set us free. And then shall we be able to move as the life of the calves. You ever seen a calf in the field? Even hours after it's born, it's full of life. When it understands that it can stand on its own feet, Yisrael, that it can move around, from, even from the wealth of the milk from its mother, the heifer, it gains strength, and it shows forth life. What does it do? It leaps about. It moves about, Yisrael. So shall it be for Yisrael. We shall move freely in the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh, and there will not be anything to bind us, anything to stop us, Yisrael. We should be just like the calf now. We should be like that now, Yisrael. We should not let problems and situations stump us or stop us from continuing in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Because just as his judgments are sure, his promises are sure. Did he say he'll never leave us nor forsake us? Come on, Yisrael. We can stand upon that. Why? Because it never changed. His call, his voice, his essence, his ruah, it's always the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let us turn, let us shoe. Hallelujah. Abba Yahweh, we do Baraki for this day. We Baraki Yahweh for your ruah hakodesh that dwells in the midst of Yisrael. For it dwells, Yahweh, even as judgment among the house. For without judgment, Yahweh, we as a people, we will perish and we will fail. We do Baraki for all things. We Baraki, Yahweh, for bringing those that had traveled here, as I can share me, his Ishaw, a hope blunt, them that have traveled here, that you take them home safely, Abba Yahweh, that your Melikim would be a camp around them, but not only those, but here at Teshua, 
and those that are listening by via of live stream, that we desire, Yahweh, that you pour out your Ruah, Yahweh, upon us. Water us, Yahweh. But we are a dry, we are a dry ground of people that are parched, Yahweh. So we need the liveliness of your Ruah, your Torah, to rain down on us, Yahweh. And all things we do, Barak you. In the precious and mighty name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, we do declare. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh Barak, Yahweh Yisrael. Hallelujah.